Lord be with you. We are gathered by God to share the love of Jesus. Boy, is it wonderful to see all of your smiling faces this morning to gather here in the house of the Lord together. It is Father's Day, and we are glad to be calling on our Heavenly Father today. In the coming hour, we are going to hear God's Word. We're going to pray. We're going to sing. We're going to bless one another. It is going to be a great day here at St. Paul's. I'm so thankful for all of you who are joining us in person at St. Paul's at this moment, as well as all of you who are in person but out on the live stream. Thank you so much for joining us together. It's really important for us to recall that God continues to gather us. We said that just a moment ago, that we are gathered by God to share the love of Jesus. And it doesn't matter if you're right here locally at 149 Lake Avenue, or if you're somewhere else in the world today, God has brought us together. It's the Holy Spirit that has brought us together by faith. It's the Holy Spirit that will send us out from this place to keep on gathering one another. This is a great opportunity for me to remind you that as a church, we are not just me and Jesus, or not just me and my wife and Jesus, it's us together and Jesus. God made the church to be a gathered together corporate people. And so if there are people that belong in the places that you are not seeing people sitting right now, you are absolutely welcome and invited and encouraged to invite your other people from St. Paul's, the folks that you know, the folks that you haven't seen for a while to come and join us back here. From this point in time forward, until the circumstances change again, and I hope to heaven that they don't change again, uh, we are going to be at a spot where you can be, if you're fully vaccinated, in church with open seating, without the need for social distancing, without the need for masks. If, on the other hand, you prefer that distant seating or prefer to use a mask, you are absolutely welcome to do so. We've reserved places for those who need that kind of seating, so just let us know that you need it. And we'll be glad to set it aside for you in that way. So if, whether you are a long-timer here at St. Paul's or a first-timer here at St. Paul's, and I see that God has blessed us with both this morning, we're thrilled that you are here. It is something that we think God has established since the foundation of the world that we should be here together this day. So the live stream, you guys that are out there, I have a favor to ask. Would you kindly share the fact, the link to the service, share it on Facebook that you're here, invite your friends to join you here. For you, those of you who are here, you can do the very same thing. You can actually go on Facebook right now and say, hey, I'm in church. You can join us now. So you can write to your children who are in England because they've got the time to do it at this point in time. Tell them to join us here. So in person, invite some friends to come to worship this next time. And let's see whatever we can do to fill up the holes that are, kind of, uh, that are here at the moment. I'd prefer cheddar cheese to the Swiss cheese. All right. So let's fill up the church this way. So. As we continue in our walk through the Bible, we are getting very near the finish line. Today, we're getting to the letters that were written to the whole church. We know that there were letters that Paul wrote to the pastors of the church. There were letters to certain cities that they had particular items of interest that Paul needed to dress with them. There were sermons that went out in the book of Hebrews. But we also have letters that went out to all the churches. And here's how that worked. They would at one city receive the letter and then they would copy it and pass it along to another city and they would copy it and pass it along to another city and they would copy it pass it along to another city and down to having been copied and passed along to saratoga springs these letters were written by people like peter and john and james and jude these are letters that are useful to all of us in that way and so i have learned my limitations. I can't preach on seven books of the Bible at once, so we're just going to pick two, two books of the Bible, First Peter and First John today, and we're going to hear what Jesus said about those people and us people together as the church together. So more on that in the service as we sing it, as we hear it in God's Word, as it's preached to you. Uh, but right now, I'd like to turn our attention for the, to the prayer for the blessing on the Word. This is the cue for you all to stand up, and we pray together. Let us pray. Lord our God, we gather in your house to hear your word and call on you in prayer and praise. Bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and peace. By your word, gather those not yet your own and grow those who have already come to faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart from the heart to the lip, 
from the lip to the life, and from one life to another, that as you have promised, your word will not return to you empty, but it will accomplish the holy purposes for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join in singing our opening hymn, Alleluia, let praises ring. We raise our voices to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from, from the, the east and, and from, from the, the west, from, from the north and, and from the south. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. And, and let, let them, them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell the deeds in songs of joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most, Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he does forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you and forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. This is a really wonderful thing to be able to say. Let's greet each other with a handshake, a hug, a kiss, a smile, a peace.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty oh, God, in your mercy, guide the course of this world so that your church may joyfully serve you in godly peace and in quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Peter, first chapter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are left exiles of the dispersion of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Blithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification, in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the Father, God the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found, found to result in praise and glory and honor in the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second epistle was from 1 John, the first chapter. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testified to that proclaimed to you the, the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us, that which we had seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And as we are writing these things, so that our joy may be complete, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of the Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deserve ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we have not sinned, we made him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, What do people say that the Son of Man is? They said, well, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? 
Simon Peter replied, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and mercy and peace to all of you, from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I know that if Judith Ann Lapin Wiegand, my mother, said the words that are there before you on the screen, just who do you think you are? My next step, I had, very cons had better consider very, very carefully. The, really, the answer to that is there is no answer to that question because if she's asking it, clearly I have overstepped who I'm supposed to be. Just who do you think you are, having done whatever it was that my earlier self did? And it got to the root of the problem. The problem is that I thought more of myself than was appropriate. I took liberties that I shouldn't have. I said something that was beyond what my mouth should have said. I thought something, I did something that was beyond what was appropriate. Just who do you think you are? If anyone ever asks you that question, choose your next words very carefully. Because who we think we are actually affects the way we think. It affects the way that we speak. It affects the way that we act. It affects our relationships with others. Who we think we are actually changes a lot about our world, and not just our world, but the world. Just who do you think you are? Imagine if Jesus asked that of you. If after looking at your sins, as he can, and he sees the way that we've betrayed one another, the way that we have ignored his word, the way that we have hurt with words and deeds or failed to help in the same way. And Jesus showed up here in this room, and instead of Pastor Adam in front of you, wearing the stole, here's Jesus with the holes in his hands, looking at you and saying, just who do you think you are? How would you answer? Most of us would probably swallow hard. I know I would. And the reason that I would swallow hard is because on the one part of me, I am the old Adam. That created being that inherited sinfulness from my mom and dad and them from their moms and dads and them from grandmas and grandpas and all the way back to our earliest parents in Eden, Adam and Eve. Just who did Eve think she was? by disobeying God's command. And who, just who did Adam think he was by participating in that sin and allowing her to go down a path that he, was, that he knew was wrong? The problem with human beings is that it's easy for us to be tempted to think of ourselves more highly than we ought. The book of Philippians reminds us that we ought to consider others more highly than ourselves. And when we don't, things fall apart. And this is where the letters to the church come in. The letters to the whole church, we call them the general epistles sometimes. We call them the Catholic epistles because they apply to the universal church. These letters are very practical letters that say, here's how you ought to live with God and with one another. They're really good advice. If you were to take the time to read through those seven letters, which won't take you very long at all, the longest of them is the book of 1 John, six chapters worth, you will get through them in a, in a morning. But you could spend a lifetime saying, how do I put that into practice? How can I better 
love my brothers and sisters? How can I better honor God? And it will give us a better self-identity. It will give us a better set of things to think about ourselves. And you might be thinking that I'm going to say, these books are going to humble you. And it's true, they will. Because as St. John reminded us in 1 John today, we've heard it twice. First, as Roberta read it. Thank you very much, Roberta, for reading it. And also, as we confessed it earlier in the confession, if we say we have no sin, what are we doing? Deceiving ourselves. And where is the truth? Not in us. That's a pretty stark assessment, isn't it? That's where we swallow hard at the just who do you think you are, because we all know it. We all know deep down that we are not without sin. We have it. It sticks with us. Like I tell my confirmants, it sticks with us like dog poo on your shoe. It's, you can never really ever get rid of it. But there's more that says... But if we, what? Confess our sins, God is what? Faithful. And what else? Just. And he will, what? Forgive our sins. And then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what the Catholic epistles, the general epistles, want to remind us. That we have an advocate with God the Father. We have Jesus So if Jesus were to come into this church right at the moment, as he is here among us, but if he were to appear physically and say, just who do you think you are? You don't have to cower in shame. Because he reminds you that you're his brothers and sisters. That you could say that. If you thought of yourself as a brother and sister of Jesus, how would that affect what you do day by day? How would you represent your family? Hmm. Or Jesus would come into this room and say, who do you think you are? And you could say, I'm a saint that you redeemed. Jesus said, oh yeah, I know that. I know you. I've removed your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. It's never coming back. Who do you think you are? You're his chosen precious lambs that he would go to the ends of the earth to bring back to himself. Just who do you think you are? You're the people of God. And that's what it means to be the church. You are the body of Christ. That's what it means to be the church. We are the gathered, called out ones. We're the ambassadors of heaven on earth. Just who do you think you are? All of those wonderful things. Don't Put your head down, but do choose your words carefully. Who do you think you are? You're the ones in whom God has already worked, continues to work. You're the ones who have a place reserved for you in heaven. You're the ones that Christ our Lord died and rose for. That's you. So choose your words carefully, but choose them in accordance with what he thinks about you, not what the devil accuses you of, and then live accordingly as the church. Because what we think of ourselves changes our world. If we think and remember that we're the family of God and do it more than on Sunday morning, our life is going to look different on Tuesday afternoon. If we think and remember that we are the saints of God, his holy people walking around on the earth today that have the same qualities in us that were in the saints of old, it's not just going to be a Sunday morning activity for you. It's going to be a lifelong identity for you. And it's going to change what you say to each other on Thursday. If you remember that you are the body of Christ that he is your head and that you are inextricably tied to him by his love and the strength of his grace operating in your life, you're going to look at your sins and you're going to say, why in the world am I ever doing that? You're not going to want to continue in them. You're going to say, I want to continue in Christ. I know the good that he has in store for me and I want to do it. Just who do you think you are? 
people of God, make no mistake and be proud of it. You are the church. These letters that went out from Peter and John and James and Jude, they were written to you too. But you know what? You're a letter to the world by the way you live, by where your hope is placed, by the encouragement that you give, by your witness to Jesus. What do we say around here? God has a mission, and we are part of it. If that's true, that's the marching orders for the church that we find and take advantage of every opportunity to be the letter that the Holy Spirit sends to the world today to join them to Jesus. Just who do you think you are? You're the chosen ones of God. Make no mistake. And go forth from this place in that confidence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand and sing with me, The Church is One Foundation. <laughs>
baptized into Christ Jesus and living together in trust and hope, we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we turn our attention to the prayers of the church, there are a few things that I'd like to let you know about. First, what you see on the screen there is how the, you, is the best way for you to be able to share prayer requests with us here at St. Paul's. So it doesn't matter if you're here in person or out there on the live stream, whether it's the middle of the week or right now, the best way to reach us so that we can know how to pray for you and with you is sending an email to prayer at spalutheran.org. Also, if you do happen to be with us in person and are using Facebook, you can put a comment down in that live stream and we'll pick that up and we'll be able to see how we ought to be praying for you. Right now, I'm opening up my text thread that tells me the prayer requests that we have received this morning. First, we want to pray for Joyce Griffiths. Many of you, some of you, some of you might remember Joyce Griffiths. We have seen a lot of change in the congregation since she and her husband Dave moved to South Carolina. Dave has since relocated to heaven, but Joyce has come back to Saratoga Springs and is now living in our area. She moved back during the pandemic and she recently fell at home, and she's hoping to join us soon for in-person worship, but right now we need to ask the Lord to help her heal from that injury and to keep her steady on her feet. We want to pray for Audra Kuhn. That's Kurt's girlfriend's mom. She has knee surgery this week, and that's uh, coming up, but not only is uh, Ashley's mom having surgery this way, her grandmother is having the same surgery the same day in the same hospital. So uh, that is Anne Stade. And so we want to pray for both of them. And then we have a prayer request that comes from, uh, from Lynette. She's saying, for our own congregation. And I agree with her in that. I pray for this congregation every day, many times, uh, so that we would have the Lord's peace. And so uh, that comes uh, from Lynette and Sue Stewart, one of our deacons. So all of these things are good for us, not only to bear up to the Lord here in worship, but during the week as well. Two things. One, we would love to welcome you to our Monday Connect, which happens at 10.30 every Monday morning. There we join for prayer. We take these requests and others and call on the Lord to bless this congregation and all of the concerns that God has brought into the lives of this congregation. It's an online meeting. You can join us at 10.30, and I'd be very glad to have more people join us at that time if you have the availability. The other thing... Uh, that I would draw to your attention is that we are about to pray. So, <laughs> so let's, next slide, please. All right. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Creator, you stretched out the plumb line and laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens as you spoke creation into existence. Your Son declared that on the rock of faith, he would build his church. Let the chief cornerstone continue to gather us as living stones to expand your living temple on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, as confessors of the word, grant that our church manifest extol the virtues of faith you instilled in the apostles and prophets who confessed your holy word. Grant that all pastors, especially our Pastor Adam, continue to faithfully testify the truth, that Jesus is your son, as Peter faithfully confessed, and that Christ alone is our savior from the eternal flame and destruction reserved from sin, for, for sin and death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer, ever living redeemer. May this congregation confess to our neighbors the love of Christ in thought, word, and deed. As seekers of the truth, allow us to serve you and teach our children to seek the light of the world in Jesus. May we always return to you 
and trust in your gracious gift of forgiveness and eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Our refuge and comforter, as we walk through this veil of tears, we grieve and suffer many ills. May your Holy Spirit continue to comfort and guide us. As hearers of your word, may we rejoice in the guarantee of faith that through Jesus we are reunited to you and that he will wipe away every tear, especially those that we commend to you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Light to the nations, through our ancestor Adam, creation is broken and sentenced to destruction. But through Jesus, the world is not condemned, but saved. As inheritors of this redemption, may all peoples turn to him for their salvation, and may those who govern under your privilege guide our land in calm and tranquility so that all may worship you in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, we join with the sons of God and shout for joy as Christ Jesus gives to us his true body and blood in the Lord's Supper. Grant that we firmly believe your word, that you, who formed the universe, give us and all is with us in this sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, these and whatever else you would have us ask of you, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Roberta, for your help with the prayers. As we now turn our attention to the gathering of the tithes and offerings, there are two things to draw to your attention. First, if you've brought an offering with you here today, there is an offering plate at the door of the church, which some of you took advantage of on your way in, and you also are welcome to do so on the way out. Additionally, there is something that I forgot to ask you to do at the beginning of the worship service. It's to let us know that you are here. That, too, is an offering of sorts. And to that end, we previously used paper worship cards. We're trying to move away from paper, period. And in the pews in front of you, there is a QR code, that little squiggly box. If you have a smartphone, you could scan that, and it could take you over to a website that you could fill out that says, I've been here. You could do that now as we're preparing for Holy Communion. You can do it afterwards. You can even open that up and leave it open on your phone and take care of it when you get home. It's good for us to know that you've been here because, honestly, about the holes in the church, we need to know who's here and who's not. And so this way of letting us know that you are with us is very helpful to the church, and so your cooperation and help with that is definitely appreciated. We also have the opportunity online to give our offerings. And so St. Paul's now has a giving platform that many of you are using. It's called Vanco, and you can find out information about that at spalutheran.org slash give. That's another place that you could go to now and leave for later. And so I encourage you to give thankfully to the Lord of what he has first given to you. However we give our offerings, whether it's in person or virtually, it's always good to do so in a dedicated and devotion, devoted way. So let us pray together. Gracious God, you are faithful and just. Through the resurrection of your Son, you have given great grace to us all. You call us to share the word of eternal life with others so that our joy may be complete. Light the way for us as we seek to live in fellowship with Christ and in unity with one another. May these offerings give glory to our Lord Jesus and build his church. In his name we pray. Amen. It's great to be able to come back to the altar of the Lord. That's what we're about to do. I invite the congregation to stand for the Eucharist liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right 
and salutary, that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. After creating all things, he took on human flesh, and for our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death. As he thus fulfilled your will, he gathered for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We join in the Agnus Day. describe to you how we're going to receive communion for the next few weeks, maybe month. We're going to be receiving communion in the pews. And so here's how this works. In, on this tray, there are prepackaged sets of Holy Communion. Little hourglass on one side is the body of Christ, which by his, you know, the bread, which is by his power, the body of Christ. And then on the other side is the wine, the, which has by the word of Christ become its blood. And what I'm going to do is come through the congregation this way in order to be able to share the sacrament and give it to you. I'll pass through each of the aisles and we'll give out the communion. If you do not intend to receive communion, please cross your hands uh, across your chest like this and that will indicate to me that I should not be giving you the elements. Once I give them to you, please wait to receive it until I make my way all the way back up here to the altar and then we will open up communion and receive it together. If you have little kids who need a blessing, I'm going to transfer that blessing power over into the mamas and the papas. I'll ask you to put your hands on your kid's head and say these words after, uh, after we receive Holy Communion. You can bless them as well. This is an important part of conveying to them the love of Jesus. So we'll be doing that as well. During the distribution hymn, which is the lamb, I'll be doing just that, distributing Holy Communion. So wait for me to, to return to the altar until we receive, 
And then after we all receive Holy Communion, we have one more song to sing, thank the Lord and sing his praise. And ushers will come with little receptacles in order to receive from you the empty vessels so that we can dispose of them in a reverent way after the service. So with all of those things said, let us prepare to receive what our Lord gives us, his very body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, the strengthening of our faith and binding us in unity one with another. Instead, first find the portion that has the host, the body of Christ in it, open it. This is the true body of Jesus Christ, our Lord, given into death for your sins. Amen. Amen. Turn over. 
open the wine. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. We sing, thank the Lord and sing his praise. Let us pray together. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Normally, I would ask you to continue standing, but we have one more item of uh, business to conduct. And this is a farewell and Godspeed to both Maggie and Alex May. Alex is joining us from afar already in Chicago, but Maggie is with us. They've been sojourned with us for some years, and now it is time for them to return to their homeland of Chicago. And uh, we are going to bid them farewell and Godspeed. So, congregation, please be seated. Maggie and Alex, our beloved sister and brother in Christ, in holy baptism, you became members of Christ's body. And among us, the Lord nourished you through word and sacrament for several years. And I'm so glad we were able to share it one more time today. As we bid you both farewell and Godspeed to begin a new chapter of life in Chicago, hear and take to, word, to heart the words of the Apostle Paul. He said, I thank my God in all of my remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this. He who began this good work within you will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. People of God, let us pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for Alex and Maggie and for your enduring faithfulness to them. Bless, protect, and defend them as they begin life anew in Illinois. Give, though we will be a part Keep us in unity and love of the body of Christ until the day we gather with all your saints in the endless joys of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Maggie, before you and, and Alex go, and we know, Alex, that you've already gone, but we hope that you are hearing this and feeling it in person this way. The congregation has one more thing to say to you, and you need to turn around for them to be able to say it's to you. And you guys need to raise your right hand in blessing and join me in saying the benediction over them and over one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Maggie, I need to give you a hug, and now that I can, I will. Oh. <laughs>
God bless you. God bless you. Go with peace. We have one more hymn to sing. It's one that's appropriate for both the May family as well as for one another as we sing, Go, my children, with my blessing. Please rise. by God to, to share, share the love of Jesus. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm so glad to see so many of you here in this place. May our Lord bring us more together again next week. May God's peace go with you and remember who you really are in Christ Jesus our Lord. You are his body, you're his saints, you're his beloved treasured possession. Live that way. Next thing is a song. You can stay to sing it, or you can go out and see one another again. Reflection. Angel 
Rise and the mysteries are clear. 